This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Doom. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Checky Show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Checky Show. Hello, Vanagans, can I help you? I'm sorry, what was this? Did you say Vanagans? <laughs> Welcome to Vanagans, can I help you? Vanagans. <laughs> Hi, Vanagans. Uh, remind me again what you sell? We don't sell anything, unfortunately. We are the uh, only exclusive uh, delivery service of Vanagans. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Almost choked on my tea. What? <laughs> you deliver vanigans? Am I misinterpreting what you're saying? No. <laughs> Excellent. Vanigans. I'm not sure I know that word, David. <laughs> I don't know what a vanigan is. Can I ask you something? It's a VW van. Oh, I see. <laughs> and you deliver them? We do. Okay. Do you... Uh, I haven't done one yet. Are you... <laughs> are... I have not delivered a single van again. Okay. But we are anxiously waiting as an exclusive delivery service of only vanigans. Have you been smoking a little of the weed again? No, no, no. This is a long time dream of mine. <laughs> I see. But you haven't, you haven't yet realized the dream because... I will also deliver the vehicle known as The Thing. Uh-huh, okay. Is that also a Volkswagen? Oh, yes. I see. Uh, why are you so uh, hepped up on the VW vehicles? I don't know. It's just the idea of answering the phone and saying, Hi, Vanagans, can I help you? Was it really a Vanagon? Are you making that word up? Uh, it's a Vanagon. Look it up. Vanagon. I'll look up Vanagon, but if it's not right, you're going to be in trouble. What's the biggest difference between the Volkswagen Vanagon and those new minivans? Well, in the Vanagon, seven people can take a vacation. And, of course, in a minivan, seven people can take a vacation. They just can't take very much else. Vanagon, it's not a car, it's a Volkswagen. See your local Volkswagen dealer. If it's not right, my whole dream, my whole life's dream is crumbled. Vanagon. Oh, I see. There are some Volkswagen Vanagon classics for sale on yeah. autotrader.com. Welcome to Vanagon. Make sure it's a Westphalia. Oh, excuse me? A Westphalia mo model. I see. Uh, let's hey, those see. ones go for about 50 grand. Here's a 1991 Volkswagen Vanagon. It is named after Westphalia... Yes. Now, tell me something. Maybe it's Vestfalia. You Ver buy that. Who, who would you rather have deliver it? <clears throat> Someone exclusively involved with Vanagans or just some random delivery service? I see. You, because you specialize in the Vanagans. Exactly. The problem is I am not insured or exposed to the public. All right. Well, then then why would anyone use you? That's what I'm saying. Can we get a, give me a hand here. We can. If you want to get a Vanagon, we, there's... Anywhere between twenty and fifty thousand dollars. So I'm saying, you think it's some cheap motherfucking vehicle? A van again is a classic. Okay. Okay. Is there, do you need a, a beverage? <laughs> and when I say do you need a beverage, is what I'm really saying is you need a beverage. <clears throat> Welcome to Vanagans. Oh. I need a beverage. <laughs> you certainly do. Uh, you've got a little bit of the dry mouth. I would call it dry mouth. Shush! You now you're blowing my cover. 
Now listen to me. From the Weedigan. Yeah. Vanigans uh-huh. are a highly sought after vehicle. Excellent. Well, all right. Are you highly sought after them? Uh, it's a four wheel drive Vanigan. Mm. It is. Excuse me. It is? Is it? Are, do they come in? I don't know. And Dave, you see? I need to know this if I'm going to deliver them because it affects your mode of delivery. I see. Well, it seems like all of these Vanigans are. Never tow a four wheel drive Vanigan. Oh. All right. Always put it on a flatbed. Okay. Or That's you could just true. Okay. Well, uh, it's it seems like uh, they're not really saying if they're four wheel drive. They are saying they're four cylinder, and they all do seem to be in California. So. Yeah, all the good vanigans in California. All right. Just like the dead shows. Oh, okay. I saw some great dead shows at the garden, but well, you all thought right. you did. Did you ever see one out west? No. Uh, you don't know what to compare it to. Did you? No. See okay, what I'm then. saying? We're All lost. Right. All right. All right. I thought I was in the Garden of Eden. I think I might have been on the outskirts. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to end this Vanagon talk. Well, Vanagon leads into a lot of stuff. I was just about to get into Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. It was either Vonnegut's or Vanagon's, and I thought Vanagon's was funny. Uh, Vonnegut's was been, you know, a used bookstore in Oregon. Uh-huh. Okay. That had just been burned down. All right. Okay. Welcome, 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 everyone, to episode 109, 109 of the Middle Age Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast featuring your pals, Reverend Johnson and Jackson. Are, are, all right. Uh, are they? You can be one or the other, but you can't be both. Are they both reverends? Are you saying Reverends Johnson and Jackson, or is it Reverend Johnson and just a, a random person named Jackson? It is a random Jackson. I'll be a random Jackson. That is a good choice because there's a whole lot of baggage coming along with Reverend Johnson. All right. Now, let's end that there. Okay, what's today's podcast about? <laughs> Was there anything behind Jackson and Johnson? Well, yeah, it was a cliffhanger. Oh, all right. They're kind of like the Hardy Boys. All right. Well, maybe uh, in the next episode, we'll... Uh, the next episode is Reverend Johnson and Jackson meet Encyclopedia Brown. Oh, I'm... And boy, does the... Hijinks ensue. It's amazing, and I'm I'm sure everyone is on the the edge of their seats. You down with Encyclopedia Brown? Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, downtown Encyclopedia Brown was my favorite. All right, are you ready for today's episode? I am. Today's episode is all about the Skinwalker Ranch. From UFO sightings to cattle mutilations, a ranch in the Uinta Basin has been home to numerous bizarre and terrifying events, and it's now the subject of its own TV series on the History Channel. The Uinta Basin in northeastern Utah has always been a UFO hotspot. Everybody who lives there basically has seen them. Balls of light, orbs, structured craft, daylight, nighttime. In 1976, a guy named Dr. Frank Salisbury uh, wrote a book about it, the Utah UFO Display, and he took hundreds of these cases that had been collected by the locals. There was a local science teacher named Junior Hicks, who, because he had taught generations of kids uh, science in that area, when they people would see UFOs, they'd call up Junior Hicks, and he went and go and investigate them. And he had, had hundreds and hundreds of files. He gave them over to this guy Salisbury, who wrote a book about it, and he said, "These are real. You know, they're going on." Excellent. Do you know anything about the Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, any ranch named Skinwalker is problematic. That, that's, that's probably true. Now, was that the name of a person? Because I've never met a Skinwalker. Hello, Mr. Skinwalker. Skinwalkers are um, a part of Native American culture. Oh, well, okay. Is it buried on top of an ancient bur- uh, Indian burial ground? The ranch is located Being in, built on top of in West Uintah County, bordering the Ute Indian Reservation. It was popular dubbed the UFO Ranch due to its ostensible 50-year history of odd events said to have taken place there. And the Skinwalkers, yes, are some sort of Native American bad, bad so, actor, bad spirit. Skinwalker. 
Skinwalker. Why would you name your ranch after that? Because I think they didn't name their ranch after that. I think that became the name of it. Like, that's what people started calling it. All right, let me harken back here. Did you say the Ute Nation? That's right. So if Joe Pesci was there, he could say there's two Utes over there? He, he he could, I guess. He could he could probably say that. There's probably more than two Utes over there. I'm just saying. Eh? Uh-huh. All right. All right. Anyway, so this is the deal. This is a ranch. It's a, say, 500 acres, give or take. Takers. It, 500 takers. It's, uh, it butts up right against what's called the Skinwalker Ridge. Totally bad vibes. It's been... A hotbed for activity. Let me ask you something. Okay. Is this where they find animals that have been fucked up? Mutilated animals. Mutilated is the word I was looking for. I believe mutilated animals have been found there. But so this is the deal. I first heard of the Skinwalker Ranch in, I think, the late 90s. Probably via a show like uh, Jeff Rents. Okay? Mm -hmm. But their history of crazy shit has been happening for quite a while. There is skinwalker-ranch.com. They have a history timeline. And according to their timeline, in 1906, newspaper reports strange noises from homesteaders in the Uintah Basin. So, as far back as 1906, weird shit that is weird enough to make the local paper has been happening there. All right. From the 40s to the 60s and the 70s, there have been UFO sightings. Now, a lot of times you'll hear, oh, Skinwalker Ranch, paranormal stuff, but it's really not ghost it's ufo activity over and over and over again jeff rents art bell george nori joe rogan all of these people have done shows or segments sometimes more than one about the skinwalker ranch do either one of you have any idea why the ranch in fact the area that you describe is such a hotbed um, I, I, I think there's hot spots throughout the, uh, the world and the, the United States, and this one just seems to have been going on for decades, if not centuries. Even if you go back into the, uh, the Native American legends, and the Ute tribe is very prominent and right, right in that area, you can go back word of mouth 10 to 15 generations, and it's always the same. In fact, I, I believe in, there's, a, there's writings from Father Escalante, that uh, document a, uh, a weird flying object. Uh, I think that's, that's going all the way back to the 18th century. So um, that particular area, for whatever weird reason, is, has been a hotbed for, for decades, if not centuries. Zach Baggins has been there. I think Portals to Hell, uh, Jack Osborne. They yeah, gotta get the Long Island medium over there. Well, this is the thing. I don't think it's paranormal ghost spirit stuff. Maybe it's both. I don't think so. I think it's UFOs. I think it's UFO phenomenon and the latest there's been so much stuff done about Skinwalker Ranch. What have the Indians got to say? What happened before the, the white people came? Maybe they've been having problems here since the 1600s. I think that the Utes and the Navajo were there to like co-mingling but I think that that went south in the late 1700s okay the Utes joined right. the US troops in 1860 in a campaign against the Navajo okay so it was Utes and the US Army versus the Navajo and some people think that is when the Navajos created this skinwalker curse i don't know i don't know if the paranormal stuff seems like there's paranormal stuff everywhere that can be found 
But the, the big thing here is the UFOs. And there have been countless UFO sightings, recordings, beams of light that what you can only see if you have one of those infrared cameras on. It's, it's been really an interesting spot. And many people have gone there. Many people have done investigations. And finally, this, this millionaire or billionaire bought the property. He hired a team of scientists, like real scientists, specialists, scientists with a whole bunch of equipment. And they went to the ranch and filmed a season for, I think it's the History Channel called The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. There is a ranch in Northern Utah. It is considered the epicenter of the strangest and most disturbing phenomena on Earth. Animal mutilations, bizarre UFO sightings, and unusual energies that have proven harmful to humans. For 20 years, the federal government tried to find answers and failed. Now, a new team of dedicated scientists, researchers, and experts has taken over. They are determined to solve the mystery and reveal the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. And that first season came out last year and the next season is coming up in a few weeks and if you like this crazy shit like I do I definitely recommend watching the first season and getting ready for the second season because in the first season they found a whole bunch of shit there was radiation there was beams that were beaming from the ridge up to the sky or vice versa from this guy, you know, they just saw this huge beam. Well, it was a power vortex. Well, this is one of those earth spots. Some people think it's a portal. A portal. Or maybe one of those spots where there's certain spots where there's extra energy. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was one of those. Well, these the Skinwalker Ranch show found, I mean, they saw so many UFOs. In one episode, they see two. And they're like, they're they're dumbfounded. I think at first they they thought that there was some sort of, maybe like you're saying, some sort of weird energy from the spot. Mm -hmm. But what they found in the first season was tons of UFO activity, one dead cow, two alpacas that were attacked by something, and the beams of light. And they also found that there was something ridiculously large buried way deep into the in the soil like they had a guy come out with a with a thing and he's like you know rolling over the land you mean something had been had landed there or something yeah something but something yeah. huge, like almost i don't know if it landed there or if somebody purposely buried something there they need to get rid of all the animals there well uh, pave the place mm -hmm. and let's make an action park too there okay <laughs> Yeah, well, because people getting hurt anyway. Let's just you know, let's have some fun. We get the get rid of the animals though. We can't any more animal sac mutilations. No, no more of that. Well, they we need a good alpine slide. They well, okay. I I hear what you're saying. Skinwalker slide, we can call it. Mm. You know, I, actually, just call it skin falling off of your ha arm when you fall off. Slide. The other thing that happens there is that electrical equipment goes bonkers. Bonkers. All Only acoustic performances. I was getting to that. It's going to be an acoustic venue. All right. Well, that's fine. They're like the phones do shit that you've never seen a phone do. It's, it's, this one guy just was holding his phone up. It was randomly dialing people. It was texting people. Like he just held it up and it was just doing all of this crazy shit. They hired some guy with a drone with like a, you know, multi-thousand dollar drone yeah. to, to go up over the land to, you know, video stuff. And his drone just didn't work. It just would not work in that spot. It had worked on another part of the land and they brought it to that spot and it was just like, nope, not gonna work here. So there's definitely weird energy there or 
electricity in the air, something weird, something we weird. But they have found that dead cow and they went over to it with a Geiger counter and it was radiating craziness. So what state's this in? Utah. Utah. Ute. Utah. Utah. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know what to say. Why doesn't the, uh, why don't they do more experimentation over there? They, well, like I said, they had a whole first season. At the end of the first season, the governor, I think it was, or the lieutenant governor came and sat down with them and kind of expressed to them that the intelligence agencies are interested in the work they're doing there. And that was kind of the end of it. And it was quite exciting. And they announced that there would be a second season, though there was kind of, you know, when, when, when. And I believe now they've announced that May 4th. Is it May 4th or maybe 14th? May the 4th be with you. Maybe it's, uh, let's see, season. All right, well. Uh, May what? 4th at, at 10 p.m. is the second season. And honestly, the first season is so good. It's it's you know it's a day binge eight episodes i'm really into all of this i'm really into all of the history of it because there was strange goings on at 1906 that was people weren't really thinking of ufos back then i don't think people really, I really were thinking about <clears throat> ufos until roswell what did the newspaper article say? They don't really have a link to it, unfortunately. It just says strange noises from homesteaders in the Uinta Basin. So. Jeff Rents has an article from 98 about the people who had recently purchased it back then. And they, were, they just said that it was rife with UFO activities and other occurrences. And by this time, that rancher and his family had lived on the ranch for 20 months. And they were so scared that he, his wife, and his two kids were all sleeping at night on the floor in the same room because it had messed with them so badly. Um, their property had had ghost-type activity, poltergeist kind of things, trickster activity. Uh, for example, the wife goes shopping to the grocery store. She buys all this food, comes back, uh, puts it on the table, takes it out, puts it in the shelves, leaves the room, comes back in, all the food's back in the bag. She would take a shower in the morning, locks the door, puts a towel and a hairbrush on the cabinet, gets out of the shower, door's still locked, hairbrush and towel are gone. Dad's out in the field. He is uh, digging a post hole, using a post hole digger, heavy piece of equipment. He stops for a second, wipes his brow, looks back and it's gone. And they find it two weeks later up in a tree. They start hearing voices at night in, in the air, speaking a strange language. They start seeing shapes um, outside the window at night, big lurking humanoid shapes, hearing heavy footsteps outside, then hearing heavy footsteps inside. Then their animals started being mutilated. Cows, uh, would the, the, the tracks would lead out into the snow and then just be gone. Calves, mutilated, cut up with surgical precision. Cats, uh, wiped out, cut up, carved up. Dogs that were vaporized hundreds of these incidents, um, they, they would see holes in the sky, like a, a great big hole in the sky and things flying in and out of it. Now this rancher, college educated guy, grounded, uh, strict re religious guy, thinks the government is trying to run him off his property. So he's out there at night lurking with a gun, trying to catch whatever government agents are doing this stuff. And it's not government agents, it was something else. They wanted to leave basically, so somebody else came in this millionaire, Robert Bigelow, came in and bought the ranch and moved in his own team of researchers. Is he heir to the Bigelow Tea Company? No, but he has his own, like, aeronautical company of some sort. Oh. And then this guy who owns it now is the guy who hired another team and then Bigelow got... Bigelow sold it to someone else? Yes. Bigelow sold it to Brandon Fugel. How lunatic would buy this place? Well, I think I think the 
up until Bigelow bought it, I think it was just people who wanted to ranch. Mm-hmm. I think it was, you know, it's 500 acres. Mm. You have cattle out there or whatever mm. else you're doing. And uh, I, I don't think the property is hospitable to farming. It's pretty desert, rocky. Uh-huh. Somehow you can have cattle, but I think that's that's all you can really do there. Let's see. In 1995, Bigelow founded the National Institute for Discovery Science to research an advanced study of various fringe sciences and paranormal topics, most notably ufology. They were there on the property, the Nitz guys, for several years. Bigelow owned it for 20 years, but eventually they gave up. Whatever this thing was, this intelligence, it did not like being stalked and it played tricks on them. And they never made the stuff public because what are you gonna do, write a paper about this? Who, who's gonna print it? The organization researched cattle mutilation and black triangle reports. Now, what's this black triangle? Uh, probably those those stealth bombers, you know what they, they are? Those... Yeah, but what do they have to do with the place? Well, I think before they were recognized as being stealth uh, aircraft from the government, people thought they were UFOs. Hmm. Interesting. But that doesn't mean all UFOs were, th- were the government. And it, it seems like that is, that that's the case. Are they still ranching there now or are they just doing more experiments? No, this, this uh, Brandon Fugel guy, they have cattle there. I think the cattle are just there to see what happens to them. They don't. I don't think it's a working ranch as far as they're <clears throat> raising cattle for food or or anything. I think it's they're just there to live, so they can see what reaction they have to the ranch or vice versa. Huh. I don't want to say they're bait, but they're definitely. That sounds humane. They're definitely, you know, there for as an experiment. The show is really worth watching. If you have Discovery Plus, it's on that. If you don't have Discovery Plus I, and you like paranormal stuff, I can't recommend it enough. Now, what's the show called again? The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, yes. Now, did they have the psychic on that? Was that what we were seeing? That was something else. They had Linda, Linda Moulton Howe. She's from... MUFON. I think she's from MUFON. Or one of those UFO type organizations. I don't know what site. I don't. Oh, no, no. I'm wrong. There was the animal mutilation expert. Well, that was her. She was. That's. She's. I see. She's an expert on all things UFO. She's been in the game forever. Again, I've seen her. I think. I've. I think Jeff Rents has spoken with her. <clears throat> Art Bell, George Norrie, she's she's been in the game for decades at this point. That's the general consensus. Animal mutilation is UFO related. Yes, because the mutilation is so specific. It's specific and and clean, you know, like a like a laser. Like if you see animal mutilation photos, I don't, which I don't recommend. It's like either weird shit, like all the bones are gone or all the blood is gone, or they're perfectly dissected, or the the face is shaved in half. It's like really weirdly specific stuff. It's not like some kid with a knife, you know. It's not like that. It's like the animal's dead, and then weird shit happens to it. So, you know, I I don't know. They they actually had the death of this one cow on on hard-to-see tape, you know, because the the camera was so far away, but it just seems like it's it's normal. It's having fun, or it's just living its life. And then all of a sudden, all the other cows like run away, and it stays, and it it's left alone, and then just dies. But as it's dying, a UFO flies right over it. They right. have the video of that. It's insane. It, the, the video that footage that they have that this group of people has has amassed just from this first season 
it's pretty it's pretty crazy it's pretty damning well I saw some of that footage you're talking about mm -hmm. and I think it's out of garbage no just kidding and I, I have to like say you. I can't I can't explain what I saw there is some sort of an image in the sky there I can't explain it. The cow does seem to freak out. And the cow, die. like, is this at that point? The cow is like <clears throat> almost already dying, and it sees the UFO and it tries to scramble to get up, but it it just is it doesn't have the strength to do it. And they also have they also figure out how fast the UFO is flying, mm -hmm. which is a ridiculous amount, like thousands of miles per hour, because it, you know, they're 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 filming at maybe 15 frames a second on that camera and you can see how far it goes within you know a few frames again if you've been into paranormal stuff at all you've got to have heard of the skinwalker ranch there's been so much there's there was one owner um maybe it was the shermans i'm not sure but they reported that they saw like aliens looking in the window at them they start hearing voices at night in, in the air, speaking a strange language. They start seeing shapes um, outside the window at night, big lurking humanoid shapes, hearing heavy footsteps outside, then hearing heavy footsteps inside. As soon as they bought it, they were having issues. So I, I feel like there's something under the, the ground that doesn't belong to, you know, humans, let's say. Mm -hmm. Something that was put in the ground long ago hundreds if not thousands of years ago and it is some sort of either like a portal or a beacon or a way station or just a marker why would the government have taken it over uh and made it one of their places where you can't get access to i think the government did try to take it over at one point but maybe didn't find anything but this is you know probably prior to all of this technology that they have now mm -hmm. you know where you can they can bounce sound off shit they can you know hover something over the ground and tell how far down there is of something so what's sonar is that sonar so, so bouncing no sound off of shit i think that is sonar i think that is sonar i think i had a polaroid camera that had sonar really yeah it was bullshit how did it what how I don't know. Am Was I it wrong? a video camera? Sonar, Polaroid sonar. Had a little thing, a little golden crinkly thing that was perceived something. <laughs> Come on, man, look it up. Yeah, here I am, the secretary. When I press this button, a new era in photography begins. Polaroid introduces sonar automatic focusing. This camera sends out inaudible sound waves that bounce off the subject and return in a split second. The lens automatically rotates to perfect focus. You can get a precisely focused picture every time in minutes at the touch of one button. The new Sonar One Steps from Polaroid, the world's simplest cameras. You had this one? Yeah. It features a sonar auto-focusing system whose speed and accuracy is still shocking decades later. That's what I'm saying. That was a shocking camera. This autofocus system can be disabled with the flick of a switch. But why would you? Which allows the camera to be manually focused. Of course. The sonar happens to be our favorite SX-70 model here at the Brooklyn Film Camera. SX-70, now that sounds familiar. It was the first, the, the SX-70 was the world's first folding SLR camera. Ah, that single lens reflex for all you people out there. And the world's first instant camera to use integral film. Integral? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, there you go. Well, sonar, baby. It did have the gold thing on top. It did, did it? It's like a screen, though. It looks like a screen. A gold, big round gold screen. Yeah, we were ahead of our time back then. Who's Everything was lining up back then. They had flying cars and fun stuff. And then something just got all stagnant. And then the 80s happened and shit stalled. Yeah, the communists. We were lining it up, man. 400 miles per gallon. 
and then all before you know it, no miles per gallon. I mean, there was some people who said that they put together a water engine. Oh, perpetual, uh, perpetual energy machine. Uh, I don't know if that was it, but it was like a steam or water engine. And, and the government put the kibosh on it. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a documentary about that or something. And there was also a guy, I think, who invented like tires that would never puncture or whatever. Mm. And I think there was a kibosh on that, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Why ain't they put the cat bus on the Skywalker Ranch? I mean, the Skinwalker. That's what I'm asking you now. Did did he name Skywalker Ranch after Skinwalker Ranch? That's a good question. Let's see. When did it start being called the Skinwalker Ranch? It's probably the worst name ever. I, d I don't think it started being called the Skinwalker Ranch until... Well, you know what? I don't know because that was a... That's a it is called the Skinwalker Ridge. Yeah, just the imagery behind Skinwalker. That, that, no, that, that does not conjure, conjure up good things. It says, in the Navajo culture, a Skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. Well, that sounds terrible. The term is never used for healers. It's a shapeshifter. It seems like it's a shapeshifter. Nancy Pelosi Ranch. There you go. Well, yeah, I guess they're stuck with the name. What, you don't like the name Skinwalker? No, oh, it's terrible. <coughs> Reminds me of <coughs> bad me. greasy chicken <clears throat> and and scary things. Bad greasy chicken? <laughs> greasy chicken. What's that? You don't want to know. Okay. But greasy chicken is what I, I said. Oh, okay. There's an article in the Deseret News from September 4th, 1978. All right. It says UFO sightings keep Uintah Basin buzzing. And it says the Uintah Basin, already famous for numerous UFO sightings in the past 10 years. So 10 years prior to this would be the in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, the prevalency of LSD. What? I said the more people take the LSD, the more sightings increase. I mean, this this kid is 13 years old. Yeah, so. just enough, old enough to be high on, a, high on the pot. Oh, I, I gotta say, I think uh, Utah is mostly inhabited by Mormons, so I'm not sure that the LSD is something that more they're... Mormon, more like more, man. No? It's not more, man? No, it's Mormons, and I don't believe they are into the LSD. I don't know about pot. All right. But LSD seems to be not part of their thing. Yeah, psil psilocybin, Me peyote, mescaline. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know what the Ute culture does, what they take. but The Ute culture, yeah, that's funny stuff. Well, no, there's still a reservation there, I believe. I'm just saying. So I don't know what, you know. Not, Everybody started doing drugs in the 60s. You think the Utes the also? mind-altering drugs. I mean, the Indians were always doing it. The American Indians, the Native Americans. So, but let me just say this. This. You, you're, you think that this, this kid in the article, Dale Wood, who was 13 in 1978 was doing LSD. Well, I was 13 in 1979, and I did LSD. When you were 13? <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, microdot. You did? A little mescaline microdot. Yeah, 13, 14. That was the first time. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, well, that's... First time I did LSD, I was 15 at a Grateful Dead show. Yeehaw, man! So, yeah. Okay. The 70s was not a time of innocence. We were high on the pot and doing the LSD. And listening to Steve Miller fly like an eagle. Okay. Well, I, all right. I was not doing the pot and the LSD in the 70s. Skateboarding all over town. You were? Egging people's houses. Okay. You sound yeah. like you were like we're a... Breaking windows with wrist rockets. You sound like you were a bit of an asshole, actually. What? I was just following along, man. 
Who were you following along? The big kids. The other kids. It wasn't me. It was none of you big kids. You were breaking windows? Not in houses. The old, the old, the old cars and junkyards. Which junkyard in Englewood, New Jersey was there? It wasn't really a junkyard. Okay. It was uh, somebody's driveway. It was the yard of a of a old uh, car repair place. Yeah, we broke windows at car repair places. That's really good, huh? No. <laughs> Sounds like you're a delinquent. I shot a wrist rocket through a Mercedes Benz window, the rear window. <laughs> it was satisfying at the time. I'm so glad we don't have children. What? I can't. I can't with you. My God. I had a wrist rocket and LSD. I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm just saying. What are you what just saying? What little Johnny was up to in 1978? Well, I, I'm going to guarantee you that little Dale Wood of the Uintah Basin was not wrist rocketing, LSDing, or skateboarding about town. He's my age. Let's ask him. Where is he? If anyone knows Dale Wood, who was 13 in 1978 from Utah. Phone in now. Well, it's not a live show, so you can oh, just... don't phone in. You can just send us an email at middleagecoolkids at gmail.com. We would love to talk to Dale. I'm going... My guess is no LSD, no wrist rockets. God damn it. What a boring life that must have been. Ah. Uh... Look, I put I put cards in my spokes like the rest of them. I Doesn't never mean did we that. didn't do a little LSD on the side. <laughs> Dave, you act like that's normal. It was not a normal childhood to uh, be doing geez, LSD look. at 13, 14, 15 years old. Uh, back in the day, it seemed pretty normal. I mean, it's not like I was like, hey, let's do some LSD. And they all looked at me I was crazy. And then I said, oh, I'm just kidding. I can tell by your reaction, I'm kidding. Exactly. They were like, we're doing LSD. You should do it too. Then they said, we're doing heroin. Don't do that. And I was like, oh, that's nice of you to tell me not to do that. Did you do heroin? No. Okay. I had older friends who were doing heroin. You do. Okay. But they said, don't you do that. We're doing it, but you don't do that. Somehow the uh, heroin acts had good morals. Okay, well... There you go. There you have it. All right. So back to the exciting stuff. Yeah. You, what the hell? You've, you've done it again. What? You've derailed everything. Come on. Dale Wood. Hit me. Hit me back. Take me back to Dale Wood's experience in the Deseret. Huh? I remember the name of the paper. Well, Dale Wood, a student at the Vernal Junior High School, was the first to see the large silver object near his grandmother's home about seven miles northeast of Roosevelt, about 10.30 p.m. on right, August cue, 11th. Cue the purple haze. While walking to his grandmother's trailer home, he could hear the sound of a finely tuned... Guitar! Purring, Jimi Hendrix. Huh? Pur purring engine. Ooh, purring engine. He looked up to the horizon and was surprised to see a silver dome-shaped object. Uh oh It was surrounded by a very intense green light that was jagged like the flames of a fire. This dude should be a lyricist. The object then hovered directly over him and he was able to see the underneath section of the craft. He could see lights there with the middle light of the greatest intensity. Oh, uh, that sounds pretty classic uh, UFO sighting. Well, he called his mother who was in his grandmother's home doing some canning. Yeah, these are not, Dave, these are not LSD wrist rocket people. Oh, man. Come on, Canna. Get on it. <laughs> you LSD wrist rocket person, you're not welcome around here. So the mother had thought that he was just trying to scare the other kids, but then the air conditioning units and television sets quit operating and his mom tried to switch on the air conditioning, but to no avail. She also noted that the dogs were whining and crying, but not barking. But they were whining as though they could hear some sound beyond the human hearing range. 
She went outside along with some of her children in time to see the craft circle over the area twice. It then took off rapidly towards the northeast. She said she was very frightened and so fascinated she couldn't take her eyes off the object. Sounds terrifying. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is the thing that I, you know, I make fun of it, but why are all these reports involving people who are seem like just common farm folk? I wouldn't... I, 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 you never... There's no... We have no reports from uh, the honeymooners in New York City. Well, I think in New York City, it's so hard to see anything. There's so many lights. Man, come on. If I was an alien, I would have been attracted to New York City. I mean, they might be in New York City. And people just don't even notice them because they're so fucking crazy. Well, they could Take be... It for granted. They could be skinwalking about. Or they could be interdimensional. So they could be in New York City, but on another it dimension. So on a dimension that we can't see. Well, that's Say possible. Say they're chilling out on the sixth dimension. Whoa. Right? I want to get my hair cut there. The sixth oh. dimension. Why? On 6th Street and Avenue D. Mm. Come on down. No. So they're, you know, I think they're here. I think the aliens are here. All right. Well. I think there are aliens that maybe they are shapeshifters and they can, you know, if they are here, they need to kick it up and help us more. Maybe they're, maybe they are all, maybe George Soros is an alien and he is all about the chaos. They need to solve the drought crisis in California. Maybe this is just a game. Maybe we're just a game to them. You know, like Predator, where they just come and they, they just hunt shit. Maybe we're just a game. Let's, let's fuck with these things, you know? It's almost like the magnifying glass on the ant, you know? Eh, I don't know. We could just be the ants. And Alien ant farm. There you go. There Are you, you go. okay, Annie? So, there have there is a long history of stuff happening there from people who are just, these are just normal people. They're not people who are out there looking for. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. You put it a little weird. They're right? common folk. Yeah, common folk seems a little... I don't know. Common folk. You yeah. know. Good good people, I would call good them. Good-hearted working man. The working class. All right. No, they're not working We're class. We're all they're... the working class, Dave. Whoa, whoa. Don't tell them. Okay. Anyway, uh, there's a few interesting websites about Skinwalker Ranch. Hit me. Okay. There's skinwalker-ranch.com. I don't know if it's an official website. Well, who owns without the hyphen? What the hell's going on there? Dear lunatic who owns my site. Skinwalkerranch.com is also owned by the people who own skinwalkerranch.org. And this is a site that is... I think it has not been updated in a long time. It looks very much like something from, like almost that Apple White cult. You know how they still have their yes. their website that's up. Uh -huh. It looks very much like. <clears throat> well. Oh, I see. I'm showing Dave the site. You can head over to skinwalkerranch.org or skinwalkerranch.com. There's a forum that seemed like it was uh it just kind of ended in 2018 like no one has posted since 2018 it looks like the guy who owned this site tried to do a gofundme for a documentary about skinwalker ranch and it didn't make the gofundme did not do well and i think he just said fuck it I'm, then i'm just i'm i don't care about this site anymore and it, it, everything he, he I think if he stopped posting, everyone else stopped posting. I don't know. I think they should do concerts there. Concert series. The Skinwalker Ranch Concert Live Series. Live from Skinwalker Ranch. I mean, just the title itself is going to get a huge attraction. Right. But like we said, some of the equipment might malfunction well, and not that'd work. Be, but that's the backstory. Let's document this. 
Okay. I mean, I, maybe they'll do it, but I think first they need to dig up whatever that huge thing is under the ground. It's still there? Yes. What it's is huge. It? I think it's bigger than our house. What do you mean? If it's still there, why haven't they dug it up? Why hasn't the government got on it? Uh, I think maybe they're afraid. Well, the government, uh, maybe, I don't know what's happening in season two. Maybe yeah. they dig it up. I don't know. Is there a spot where the government took over a big hole in the earth that goes to hell? Are you talking about Mel's hole? Hey, hey, take it easy. Doesn't mean she's a bad person. Okay, that's not very nice. Anyway, Mel's hole, I believe, was a hoax. A hoax? A hoax that was perpetrated on Art Bell and his listening audience. It surely was fun, but I don't think it was real. Shit. God damn it. So Mel's... there's no holes that have been taken over by the government? I'm going to say no, but that could be wrong. Uh, that is compelling. There could be a hole out there that's... The power been... of holes in the ground compels me. I mean, there are those holes, I guess, in Russia where you can hear, like, screaming and stuff, but I think it just might be wind. I don't know. Jesus, that sounds eerie. It but is eerie. Let me ask you something. If I could just remember what I was going to ask mm -hmm. you. Here. The Soviet Union drilled a hole more than 12 kilometers deep in Siberia, which shares borders with Norway and Finland. The project to drill into the Earth's surface began in the 1970s, when Soviet scientists wanted to learn more about the Earth's crust. Over two decades, they managed to dig more than 7.5 miles down into the Earth. The drill broke through into a cavity, and the scientists lowered some equipment to see what was down there. An extremely heat-tolerant microphone, along with other sensory equipment, were lowered into the well. The temperature was about 1,100 degrees centigrade, about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But the real shocker was the disturbing sound that was recorded. They only got about 17 seconds of audio before the microphone melted, but it was 17 horrifying seconds of the screams of the damned. What do you think of that? Well, I don't know what to think of that. That's some scary sounds, though. That doesn't sound good to me. But that was in Russia. So, uh, what were you saying? Why have they not removed the thing from the ground? Why I, wouldn't that be the priority? Well, I think, again, I think it's the, they're concerned about radiation. If it's... if so, the, the cow was radiated. The dead cow was very radiated. I think they are concerned that anything that they're digging up might also be very radiated so also on top of that it's enormous it's an enormous thing it's not just you know something that's why don't they drill into the ground and put cameras down there again they're they don't want to upset radiated land there oh, there's a the real concern about that but maybe they address that in this second season i am all about the second season but he's a robot that's true. But again, shit. See, this is the other thing is that shit malfunctions there. It, I, always. Everything. It, everything malfunctions there. Uh, sounds like the uh, land of the damned. Well, I. Something's under there. Something's. Again, I don't know. Is it hey. a beacon? Is it just a. Here, make this left turn at this planet Earth and go, you they know. They need to put a dome around it. Isolate it. Doty. Doty. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see. Are you down to watch season two with me? Yeah, I'll watch it. I'll check it out. You got my interest uh, intrigued here. Do you want to do a season one rewatch with me? Whoa, whoa now we're getting committed. Oh, I, I would watch it again. It's so fucking fascinating. Well, I watched a little bit of season one. I got the gist of it. Did you? Yeah. Gisty. Oh. All right. Well. Oh, I... shout, bro. Okay. All right. Uh, what? I, I don't I know. It's... It's... What? <laughs> Are there more places in the, in the, uh, around it or like the Skinwalker Ridge? <clears throat> uh, well, you know, there, there may or may not be, but Skinwalker, like I said, 
Skinwalker Ranch. I used to listen to Jeff Rents all the time. Well, here's what I want to know. Yeah. Where is the majority of animal mutilations have, have where has that occurred? GPS coordinates will do. I, I'm going to oh, say Texas, maybe? Texas. Let's see. According to the New York Post, uh, you call that postum? Hold on. Call that New York Postum. Looks like Colorado, Texas. Areas where there are most cows. Yeah, I you know that's that's basically what we're seeing here. I wonder if there's been any mutilations in that Kawalinga, whatever that's called. What is Kawalinga? Koa Kawahanga? What are you talking about? Jimmy Chonga. What are you saying? Uh, that town you pass through when you're going down I-5 on the way down to L.A. and oh. the whole neighborhood smells like urine. Yeah. And there's thousands of cows. And I think the town's called something like Coalingo or something. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. That That's, place is terrible. That place is terrible. They look like the cows look like they're just... Can't it be? Can't they do it better than that? There's like no grass there. It's all like dirt. Why does and the poop. place smell from miles and miles stinks. away? It stinks. It stinks. I mean, that's just terrible. It is terrible. If you've if you've ever driven Someone from, explain to me why that's how that makes sense. If you've ever driven from LA to even like Sacramento and you take Route Five, you know exactly what we're talking about. It's just a huge cattle. I don't want to even say ranch because it just looks like it's like they're in prison there. It's just, it's just, and it just stinks. It just stinks. It's bogus. It's gross. It's really gross. It's gross. Cause... But anyway, there's it's, this article is the shocking truth behind the 10,000 animal mutilations in America's heartland. So, and they do give coordinates actually. So, the first thing they're talking about is Colorado Springs. So, and of course, there's pictures that are really awful to look at. You don't want to look at these. But this is the New York Post. I'm, I was surprised that this is, a, that that's a paper that even did anything. Interesting. According to Wikipedia, cattle mutilation is the killing and mutilation of cattle under unusual usually bloodless and anomalous circumstances. Worldwide, sheep, horses, goats, pigs, rabbits, cats, dogs, bison, deer, and elk have been reported mutilated with similar bloodless excisions. But never humans. Often an ear, eyeball, jaw, flesh, tongue, lymph nodes, genitals, and rectum are removed. So if humans just hung out in the fields, you think it would happen to them too? I mean, now you're 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 talking about this whole other thing, but I come never a human. Apparently, the the rumor is, is that Eisenhower signed some sort of deal with aliens, where they could abduct humans at a certain rate per year, I guess, to experiment on them, but not kill them. Mm -hmm. I think there was a. I think after. I mean, that's where all the missing children are. No, I think the missing children are underground sex slaves. Oh, the Pizza Gate. Yeah, Pizza Gate or whatever you want to call it. Pedo Gate. I think that's where those children go. <laughs> but that's like a whole. There's like a whole. There's a whole conspiracy about Eisenhower signing a treaty with aliens and that's that's not a, a skinwalker ranch thing but it is quite fascinating i love the ufo stuff i love all of the crazy shit except madonna my dirty <laughs> i don't like my dirty 
We need a movie mm -hmm. with Madonna and she gets abducted by aliens. Then we can start the movie. <laughs> what? What? I'm just saying that could be like the first scene. She just gets mutilated by aliens. I don't. But then the movie has nothing to do with that. That's. <laughs> I see. Well, I, you know what? It's like a, just as an aside. If it was a documentary, maybe. But, uh, Whoa, our shout. Dude, I don't want to. I, I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. Nobody She's does. Filthy. Oh, filthy Madonna. My dirty. Anyway, so cattle mutilation is a thing. It's quite gross. The visuals are not pleasant. Uh, can you go to the Skinwalker Ranch, take a tour? Are they allow public there? No, it's it's locked up. But so if you go there, they're going to shoot you on sight? Well, if you go on the property, maybe. But I'm going to go on the property. I'm going to go number two on the property. Okay. Skinwalkerranch.org. Or, or More skin, like dot ogre. Or skinwalkerranch.com. They are one and the same, remember. Um, they... They will ask all your frequently, frequently asked questions. No. Like, can I come to your ranch? No. Do you serve apple pie? I, are you friendly? If they went, if they served apple pie, I think I might make the trek. But Do anyway. you have friendly fire? Anyway, listen. Yes. They have a maps section where they show you where the ranch is. And well, here's they a teaser, but don't ever come here. No, that's oh. but they then they also show you viewing spots. So Will they you fly your own drone above it. They, what if I come on the outskirts and fly a drone? You can't fly a drone over it. Why not? Because that's still their airspace. That's the Skinwalker Ranch airspace. They're gonna stop me. They might, they might shoot it out of the sky. That I would like to see. But uh, anyway, so this skinwalkerranch.com has actual directions on how to get there from the Salt Lake City Airport. Why? Because this is skinwalkerranch.com, all things Skinwalker Ranch. So wait a second. You're telling me that skinwalkerranch.com is not affiliated with Skinwalker Ranch? It's a fan site. That, there's no fans of Skinwalker Ranch. How could you be a fan of such nonsense? Because it's a... It's, it's a scary place. It's like it's, Area 51, right? What if I'm a fan of of some person in, down the street? Okay. And I just start posting all their shit. Uh, like, well, well, like what shit? You know, like, here's their driveway. Here's what time they come home. Here's where you can meet them. I That's mean, not illegal. If they're out and about... Skinwalker Ranch doesn't want you going there. Yet, here's exactly how to get there. They didn't post this. This is some lunatic giving up their shit. Okay. Anyway, so they have on this map that they have created. Illegally. Well, the map is Google Maps. It's nothing illegal about having a Google Map. They have all these, like, little viewing points where you can observe Skinwalker Ranch without being on Skinwalker Ranch. So they have all these little markers where you can drive and see the Skinwalker Ranch. So you can go up here to this viewing area and observe Skinwalker Ranch and the skies above it with, you know, your binoculars, your telescope. Mm -hmm. And then here's a picture of the Skinwalker Ranch. And again, this is old. This is not this this website has not been updated for years. Mm -hmm. So th I believe the Skinwalker Ranch entrance now actually has a guard shack, and there is a locked gate. Uh, I think a better gate than the one in this picture. So you cannot go on the Skinwalker Ranch unless you have been invited. There is a guard shack, and I believe they also have security people uh, driving around constantly. Because it is such a big ranch. Gotcha. Uh, 500 acres is a, a nice big plot of land. So I think someone's always driving around. I don't I don't know if people try to sneak on. Does it snow there? I think it does snow. And, I mean, it's yeah, Utah. people go to Utah to ski. Yes. So I would, I would think that... Look, they even have... RV camping places nearby where you can go. 
and also hotels that you can stay. Uh, skin, skinwalker Motel. In place, there is no Skinwalker Motel. What does that say? It says Steinecker Motel. Yeah, you know what that means. Skinwalker. Okay. I mean, it could be someone's name. I don't know. Steinecker? That's someone who drinks beer. So maybe, you know, maybe if we ever get real popular, we can have a field trip where we everybody, you know, gets a, a room at the Steinecker Motel or the Super 8 or whatever, and then we all go to the viewing point with our binoculars. Well, see, here's the problem with that. Spend a, a night <coughs> Inevitably, there. yeah, someone's tires are going to run over one of them things. What things? That they put across the road. No. And then you're no. going to have to get your car repaired, and they're going to say, well, there's nowhere to stay tonight. We only take cash. Okay. And maybe you can do some cleanup down here at the old amusement park. And in the morning, what the what park? The amusement park. Okay, I think you said amusement. <laughs> and then in the morning, your car will be ready for you. Okay, Dave huh? is now talking about Willie's Wonderland. Is that what it was called? Which now, is that was a quality movie. Welcome to Willie's Wonderland. You spend the night cleaning Willie's Wonderland. I will pay to have your car fixed. Deal? You are officially on staff. Let's get the hell out of here. I can't stand to hear a grown man scream. This place has a dark history. I know the bullshit story they told you. It's a lie. You're here to be a human sacrifice. <laughs> have you been listening to a word I've been saying? He's gonna die in here, but he won't listen to me. Uh, the latest and greatest Nicolas Cage movie, which uh, we we rented for three ninety nine online. That was inspiring. Let me tell you something. That Nick, man is a, a, a few words. Nick. Okay, Nick Cage never speaks in the movie. He's the star, and he never speaks. He's the star, and I will say that this movie is probably in my top five Nicolas Cage movies. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty good, because he's in a lot of good movies. He's in a lot of good movies, but this movie is really good. I love when he plays pinball. He's very, he's very emotional. Well, I think he was the beverage he was drinking every hour made him a little bit more emotional. I think he was hopped up on the punch out or whatever. It was I don't called. know. There was some missing, missing, some stuff you had to kind of draw the lines together, but I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah. So if you are a fan of Nick Cage, especially his newer, weirder stuff that, you know, he seems to do for just a paycheck or whatever, I think you will enjoy the shit out of this one. It's really good. This one was good. It's, it was funny and it was scary and it was good. It's and I don't really like scary movies. I don't like the feeling of being campy. scared, but it's so campy and fun, and it's just really well done. It's I my hats off to whoever made that movie. It's great, definitely a, a classic. It should be a cult classic. It's pretty good. It should be one of those midnight movies that people go to. It's fucking fun. It's fucking really fun. I could not recommend it enough. Willie's Wonderland, I believe it's called. Yeah, there you go. Nicolas Cage just released. Quite a music. Really, really fun. Just really fun. Definitely, I would catch it if you're into that sort of thing. All right. So you keep you 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 we're we're straying now. What? Okay, that's loud. Oh, sorry. You're straying, we're straying. Maybe we're done for, with Skinwalker Ranch. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, no. I think that's about it. Shame on these people who have made it into an attraction for people to view. That's what I say. Fan sight. Oh. Well, I, I would go to one of the... the again... I would there they have so many spots where you can view the the area that that are public spots. So I would definitely do a field trip at one point and and check it out. You know who should go there is Tom Green. Tom yeah. Green's out and about doing hit the van life thing. Uh, yeah. He should 
he should drive there with his beautiful little doggy and see what he sees. All right. I want to look forward to that. Well, we'll have to get him uh, I'll get him a link to this website. Maybe he'll get on board, Tom. Come on, Tom. I love Tom Green. Okay. All right. Well, this has been episode 109. A little late in coming because, uh, <laughs> why are you what? Because of what? I, I had a bout of an illness. I nearly died. Shush. Oh, okay. Anyway, if you're interested in listening to our past episodes, head on over to macpodcast.com where every episode we've ever done is available for your listening pleasure. Also, we have macradio.com, which is our online radio station, which is filled with music from our personal collections. But I'm thinking that maybe, you know, we have a whole bunch of different shows. We have Drive Time, we have Funk Fridays, we have, I think, Groovin' Tuesdays or something like that, 70s Wednesdays, 80s Wednesdays. We have Jazz on Sunday. We have a whole bunch of different blocks of music, but I'm thinking we should do some sort of block of acid jazz. Acid jazz. <clears throat> and there seems to be, I only know now of Incognito and Jamiroquoi as acid jazz. So if you know more acid jazz, please let us know. Let us know who the acid jazz bands are. And I will try and put together an acid jazz block of music on our radio acid station. Acid jazz. All right. Anyway, thanks for listening. And we will see you next time. America. Vanigans. Mm-hmm.